Hello and welcome back to Clownfish TV. It is me, Geeky Sparkles, and it's just me today because Neon is off doing something else for this video. So we're gonna talk today about Disney, so it's some dismal Disney for you. And we're talking about this article in the direct that is taking a report from Matt Bellany talking about why Disney claims their movies are failing. Okay, this is a report about why Disney, what Disney is blaming the, the recent failure of their box office, and I would say Disney Plus movies and shows on. And while some of the points are valid, there's a lot of things we're gonna look at that not so much. You're kind of like trying to memory hole some stuff and they're trying to, to, to try to turn focus ahead of this proxy battle and everything else. So before we get into it any further, please like and subscribe. If you do, I'll give you a woohoo, woohoo. And we're gonna talk about this. So yeah, the, t the article is called Why Recent Disney Movies Are Failing According to Disney, all right? So they're saying that uh, Matt Bellany's new report reveals what factors Disney is saying is the reason for this pattern of box office failures, okay? Um, since the pandemic, many of Disney's cinematic endeavors, both standalone projects and major franchises like the MCU or Indiana Jones, have failed to see an overwhelming success the company has grown used to. And they're going to try to blame it on the pandemic. I kid you not. So they're talking about projects like Wish and Eternals were not as well received as Disney may have hoped. Wish, you know, that one I could see maybe being a big deal. But Eternals, who thought that was going to do well? Just because you slap Marvel on it doesn't mean people are going to come. It is a movie with a bunch of characters, like way too many new characters. It's not really related to anything else that's going on. And you tried to shoehorn it in. And they're going to blame it on the box office performance on the pandemic or the, how it wasn't developed well because of the pandemic. And we're going to talk about that here in a second. But they're saying it's not always due to quality because Elemental and the Marvels, they didn't do that great at the box office, guys, but they just did fantastic on Disney Plus because we said so. Bestest ever. Last year, Disney had a horrible box office year. I would even say that that would be going back the last year or two, but last year especially was not good. They only had, the only one I think that did pretty well, well Avatar came off of the year before and it was doing okay. And then um, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 did relatively okay. But most of the stuff they put out did not do well. Either like lost money, like the Marvels lost at least a hundred million. Um, or it broke, barely broke even like the Little Mermaid fiasco. And I think a lot of it is because people are tired of the live action remakes. I think you've trained your audience to wait for Disney Plus, which comes up here in a minute. I think you, you ran out of ideas when you, when you buy these things and it comes with a plan. You follow the plan until the plan runs out. And then when you try to make your own plan, you, you don't do a very good job. And some of the things that you choose to back are questionable. And I don't know why you thought it was a good idea. Okay. We're going to talk about that here in a minute, but they're saying Disney reportedly blames failures on pandemic era changes in his, what I'm hearing newsletter, Matt Bellany is talking about how Disney blames the streaming focused mindset of COVID-19 for the, the problems they're having. They said the reason the company's having trouble is the recent pattern of box office failures is being attributed to dilution of focus and resources for movies well, you darn greenlit too much shit between Disney Plus and theatrical releases that you didn't have the money or the resources or the special effects teams to do a good enough job. You, you were trying to shove these out and you were trying to, you know, oh, we're going to have a budget of all these theatrical movies for all these shows on Disney Plus and it wasn't feasible. You also, because of the pandemic, took movies that were supposed to be theatrically released like, you know, Raya and the Last Dragon or Mulan or some of these other ones. And you and no, I'm not faulting them for this because what else are they supposed to do? And Disney Plus is what kind of kept them going. You put it on Disney Plus for a premium upcharge. At the time, it made sense. A lot of places were doing it because the theaters were closed. I'm not faulting them for that. But what you've done is trained your audience to just wait for Disney Plus. And then also with some of your your movies after Endgame when it comes to Marvel people have realized that if you don't see every movie, it's not a big deal. Leading up to that, people went to every film because they felt like they had to see all of them, including Captain Marvel, which clearly people don't really care for Carol Danvers or they would have gone to see the Marvels. And it was mostly men that saw the Marvels, not women. Women didn't go either. So you can't blame it on some gender ideology bullshit. 
you you just keep putting these things out there. Like Ms. Marvel, you keep trying to make Ms. Marvel happen. The comics didn't do well. They've rebooted it how many times? People don't want Ms. Marvel. Now, I, I like the actress. I think she's a sweet girl. I really hope there's lots more stuff she does in the future. But people don't want Ms. Marvel. No matter how many times you shove it down their throat, no matter what kind of coating you put on it, they don't want it. And you keep doubling down on this idiocy. And then Strange World, don't even get me started. So here's what they said. Iger has shown confidence in Alan Bergman, who actually, Alan Bergman is one of the people that are allegedly up for replacing Bob Iger. Despite the recent creative and business troubles at pretty much all the units he oversees, Marvel, Lucasfilm, Pixar, Disney Animation, and Disney Studios, because he does the movie aspect. Entirely, people have chalked up the slide in dilution of focus and resources during the COVID era rush to see Disney Plus and Hulu with as much content as possible. Mm, you did try to see the Hulu, but I don't think that's the reason that you're having box office troubles. I mean, I think it's part of it, but I don't think that's all of it. They're talking about the uh, output ramped up beyond what the company was ever built to deliver. True. Creatives were stuck working mostly at home and away from creative collaborators because of COVID-19 lockdown. No. He said, um, everyone was going 100 miles per hour, the thinking goes. We're also working mostly at home and away from creative collaborators and the output ramped up beyond what the company was ever built to deliver. Disney made decisions without thinking them through or testing ideas properly and the content ultimately suffered. Yeah, except you were greenlighting this stuff way before the pandemic. That's, that's bullshit. Yeah, you worked at home, but this stuff was in play for years. Okay, what failed? Lightyear. Lightyear didn't, didn't work. It was in development for five years. Okay, so it came out, but way before that, it was came out in June 2022, but they were working on it in 2017. The pandemic didn't hit until 2020. Strange World, another example where they were working on it in 2017. Uh, it didn't come out till a long time later in 2022 as well. And that was, and that was after the pandemic too. The box office was open in 2022. So, you, you know, people just didn't go see it because one, your advertising has been shit. Two, it didn't look good. I'm sorry. It didn't look that good. People didn't care to see it. It wasn't because of pandemic. It was because it wasn't good. Same with Lightyear. You thought it was a great idea to do a movie about Buzz Lightyear without Buzz Lightyear. It was stupid and it was stupid when it was developed, started developing five years before it was released. Pandemic my ass. Eternals. Eternals again, April, 2018. Feige announced they were doing the Eternals. That was before the pandemic. Now it did release in 2021, which probably did hurt them some because people still were afraid to go to the movies. But it was a movie, a, a Marvel movie about a bunch of characters that nobody knew. And you're not talking like one or two new characters. It is an entire ensemble of new characters. And it's like a lot of investment to ask from audiences. Plus, you pick someone to direct it who did no Badland, had no superhero experience, and it showed in the film. But again, it started out two years before the pandemic hit. Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, it got pushed back a couple times, but development was that. It was confirmed and they were in development in 2019 before the pandemic. Ms. Marvel. Ms. Marvel was the TV show that was on Disney Plus and it did not do well and they keep trying to make her happen. And it came out in 2022, but they started working on Marvel. They cast her in 2020, but it was already being worked on in 2019. They already had writers on it in 2019, months before the pandemic. So you can't blame it solely on the pandemic. Indiana Jones, they worked on this thing for years and they still pushed the dates back several times. 2018, 2020, they were doing this, this, they were working on this thing for a long time. It wasn't because of the pandemic solely. Do I think that pandemic caused some issues with communications and stuff like that? Yes. But a lot of people worked from home during the pandemic and a lot of people got their jobs done during the pandemic. All right. Do I think the pandemic is solely to blame? No, I think the movie sucked because they were going to suck because they were just bad movies. 
and there ones the only one you had of these the ones I mentioned Indiana Jones you had to build an audience and but and Lightyear already had audiences ready to go for those and you still fucked it up. I think though going back to the thing that is related to the pandemic is that you trained audiences to wait for Disney Plus and I do think that's playing into it somewhat. But do I think that's the biggest part of it? No. Do I think that that's the reason why why the Marvels, you know, was in the hole and they had to pull it from theaters because it sucks so bad at the box office? No, because that would be your excuse for everything. And you still had some that did well. I mean, at least The Little Mermaid broke even. Wouldn't people be waiting for just Disney Plus for that one too? Elemental did, did better on Disney Plus, but you left it in theaters for months before you took it out. That also played into it. And mostly it was overseas that, that saved it. The world has been headed back to some semblance of normalcy. It has for a couple years now. That's not, that's not recent. The pandemic was in 2020. You didn't even claim it in 2021. It's 2024. Okay. No, this is bullshit. It's been back to normalcy for most people. You're just using it as an excuse. I mean, we kept joking. How long are they going to blame the pandemic for everything? Apparently they're still doing it. Okay. They're saying that the normal cadence and work environment would, will lead to greater intentionality and ultimately better movies. I don't see it because I'm seeing what you guys have coming and none of it looks good. I mean, Inside Out 2 maybe. Now the thing goes, Iger has returned. He literally returned at the end of 2022. So he's only been back like a year and a couple months, okay? And the company is functioning with normal cadence and work environment. It was before that too. And that'll lead to greater, you already meant that, and ultimately better movies. Are things looking up for Disney? If nothing else, fans at least know that Disney is reportedly recognizing the problem rather than trying to justify it or brush it under the rug. No, no, they've done plenty of trying to justica justification for it, blaming the pandemic, number one, repeatedly. The whole article is about what they're hearing from Disney about why they think their movies are failing. Pandemic, these are their excuses. This article is supposed to be about their excuses, but they're not blaming anyone. Look, audiences expect a certain type of movie. They expect Disney quality films. They expect Marvel to be good. They expect Star Wars to be good. Marvel did fantastic. And it wasn't the pandemic because the, it, it started going downhill after Endgame because a lot of people checked out after that 10 year run. And then when you started going into your phase four, which I joked was, you know, the MCU and that was nerdrotic and stuff saying that they started calling it that for a reason. All right. You clearly, your plan went up to 10 years and then your new team started the new plan and you're trying to make these characters stick, these race bent, gender bent characterizations of characters people knew. You're trying to make them stick. And while some I think will, will be popular with people, a lot of them will not. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see what's going to do well and what's not going to do well, but Disney keeps doubling down on the wrong things. And the days of being able to call your audience bigots is over. And I think if they could still rely on that, they'd be doing it, but they can't. You can't bully people into seeing your movies anymore. It's not going to happen. Now they're trying to go the other way where it's like Moana 2 and Frozen, you know, 3, 4, 5 and, you know, uh, Toy Story 5. And they're just trying to, to cling to these properties that they know they can do well with, which is okay. I don't fault them for that, but you also need to create new things. But the things you have coming out that are new aren't good. Elio does not look good. I'm sorry. I've seen the trailers. I mean, maybe I'll change my mind closer we get to it. It's not up to next year. Not looking good. Snow White, big train wreck. Not looking good. No one wants live action adaptations of Bambi and every movie you ever made, Hercules. And then you can't have a live action adaptation unless you completely change something about it. Usually gender or race swapping. It's lazy, it's tired, and people are sick of it. And they're, I don't know, I mean, they might be excited about a couple of these like sequels, but I just think that you're just, you know, like as I, I Pelt said, throwing spaghetti against the wall. And that's how it feels. Disney is not being Disney anymore, they're just being a content farm. So they said, it's not to say the sequels and adaptations are exempt from quality over quantity scrutiny. In fact, they may be even more criticized because their ties are a successful franchise, so I agree. However, they may not necessarily be indicative of the larger trends. Disney's panicking because when they try to do new things, it's been dog shit. So they're trying to just find what people liked and then make more of that. And, and to, to what end? 
you know, you're, I don't think where people are going to sit through Moana four, five, six, you might get a Moana two. And even then the quality is going to be questionable because it was a TV show that you were literally repurposing at the last minute to try to save your ass and the Disney board's ass. I think Disney needs to go back to making movies that are good movies with good characters. And some of them are, are ha happen to be diverse, you know, Lilo and Stitch, Moana, Encanto, different things that happen to be diverse because they're just, that's just the way it is, Pocahontas. They're just diversity because it just happens to fit the story. Not because you're just trying to diversify everything for accolades and DEI shit, you know? And it's not fair, again, to the people who are talented that happen to be diverse because by you doing this stuff, all you're doing is making every, you know, everybody think that the people that are hired for legitimate reasons are only hired for check boxes. And that's not fair either. I'm just, I'm just tired of it. But why is Disney not doing well? Partly, yes, Disney Plus is eating your lunch. You trained your audiences to wait. Why would I go to the theater and spend a shit ton of money and take my kids and have to handle them for hours? And my kids are older now, but they were little. Handle them for hours. Drinks, popcorn, candy, time, all that shit. At the theater, when I could just wait two or three months and then it's gonna be on Disney Plus anyway. Now I noticed with Wish, they are not putting it on Disney Plus right away. They are trying to milk that one out. I think they're trying to drive demand up. People are waiting for it. I think their thought process is, people keep searching it. If we just hold off on that longer, when we drop it on Disney Plus, a lot of people are gonna watch it because we've built up this pent up demand. And then they're gonna say, oh, most stream show ever on Disney Plus. But the box office, it did shit. It is what it is. And just don't make shitty movies. You know, make give people characters they want, give people stories they want, and what you are with some of these sequels, but make good new things as well. L lately, there hasn't been a lot of that. So I don't want to tell you, but you kind of did it to yourself. But this whole idea that everything was because of COVID, because of development and mix up and confusions and, and people being at home, bullshit. People were at home for like, you know, several months. Yes, but a lot of the movies that failed were in development for a long time before that. So that's not an excuse or they, and you pushed them back. Well, let me push back two or three times after you came back. So you don't have excuses there. I'm sorry, but you don't. Anyway, what do you think? Comment, let us know. And we'll talk to you later.